What did I say? During the mean whilst. During the mean whilst. No, no, no. Like that at all. Well, hello. It's Dexter and me from the top of the Barren Mountain up above uh, Pont de Dewey in the Swansea Valley somewhere. And we've come up to shoot a lovely sunset uh, panorama. Um, and I thought I'd do a bit of a how I shoot my panorama type um, videos. There's loads of them out there, but this is mine. And uh, these are my tips. And if you pick up something new, uh, great. If you don't, then so what? Um, the reason I'm gonna shoot a panorama rather than break out the uh, ultra wide angle lens is because I, I want really to compress this scene. Now, if I shot this with a wide angle, um, that chapel there is going to look tiny. Everything in the background is going to look really, really small, and it's not going to be much of an impactful image. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm battling sheep uh, as well at the moment. Um, so I figured that when I'm setting up to shoot this panorama, I'd um, show you my steps. Um, the most important thing when shooting a panorama really is, is to get your tripod and your camera absolutely plumb level, uh, both of them. It's not good enough to have your tripod like this at an angle and get your camera straight on there. Uh, that's not going to work for you. Uh, you need to have uh, everything straight. So I'm just going to adjust this. Now I got a bubble level on my tripod, which is rather handy. If you haven't got a bubble level on it, then you can get um, sort of cube-like bubble levels that attach to the top of your tripod. Or you can just take a bubble level from home, I guess, and, uh, and use that. Um, I'm going to get this spot-on, dead-level accurate. There we are. So that's step one. This tripod, the base anyway, is now level. I'm also now going to level the head in exactly the same way by making sure that little bubble is perfectly centered, which it now is. There we go. Time now then for the camera. Now what you want to shoot a panorama really is a telephoto, oh Jesus, my back, a telephoto lens of, uh, well I got a 55 to 200 on here. Um, which is ideal really for shooting this sort of uh, this sort of image. So I'm going to mount the camera uh, in portrait orientation. Voila! There you go. Let's turn that on. Now I'm going to expose manually, if you pardon the expression. Um, so I'm going to shoot this at around about f8. That's going to give me plenty of uh, depth of field. I'm also going to shoot it at... I'm going to go with 100 mil. Let's just focus that in a sec. Where's the chapel? There's the chapel. Right. I'm going to go into 100 millimeters. And I'm also now going to get this dead level, not just horizontally, but vertically as well. So if you've got a leveling system in your camera, make sure you're both plumb and straight, which I can't get. Come on, come on. There we are. So my camera is now level in two axes, horizontally and vertically. So I'm gonna expose the scene i'm going to expose it for the sky so i'm going to go in completely manual everything so manual shutter speed manual iso which i'm going to leave at 160 um, manual focus everything manual so at f11 exposing for the highlights that's going to give me that's about 1 125th that's 1 60th. I'm going to go with the 1 125th first. Um, make sure I get the sky nice. And then um, I might uh, bracket and shoot it at a, a slightly uh, slower speed to make sure I get 
any highlight or shadow information rather. Right, what I will do now is I'm just going to pan across the whole scene that I'm going to take an image of and look at the histogram on the back of the camera to make sure that I'm not blocking any shadows or, or clipping any any highlights and I think I am the shadows are really yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna bracket this as well so I'm gonna shoot this at 1 125th and I'm also gonna shoot it at 1 60th now make sure you leave plenty of cropping space uh, in your panorama so shoot more images than you need really um, and before you shoot your first image shoot like a flag a guide image stick your finger in front of the camera there it is an image there we go so that's your first image so if you then get home and you've shot a panorama in the middle of a load of other uh, scenes you know where your panorama starts and um, we'll shoot another flag image at the end right let's go with this i'm gonna put the two second timer on and we're gonna start shooting and make sure you overlap your images by at least 50 percent this will give your computer more of a chance to um, to stitch them together later uh, in whatever editing program you're going to use. This is going to be the last one though, I think. So I'll shoot another image with a finger in front. So now I know that is my series of panorama images shot. All right, and that's all the images shot. It's lovely up here, isn't it? It's a really, really peaceful spot. I, I've shot this uh, this scene at this chapel uh, loads of times. It's such a peaceful place to come, he says, as two motorcyclists come tearing down the road. Uh, anyway, it, yeah, it's such a peaceful place. Uh, I'll swivel you around now so you can you can see where we are. really is not quite in the middle of nowhere but it's getting there there's me car well there's Lisa and Dexter up by the car yeah it's uh, it's a lovely place to come and be contemplative and uh, and take pictures lovely Right, so back home uh, a couple of days now after our um, sunset trip out to the top of the Barren Mountain uh, up above Ponte Dewey in the Swansea Valley. It's a lovely, lovely spot. I hope you like the, um, some of the footage from up there. It, it's a lovely, quiet, peaceful place. Uh, and no doubt why they built the chapel there, though. <laughs> it's, um, I think the chapel is actually for uh, like, like the farms and the agricultural communities around. So there's no, um, there's no sort of village or even a small little gathering of houses around there. So uh, I think it's primarily or used to be primarily for for the farmers. So the chapel is still is still in use. Um, anyway, uh, after I stopped filming, um, I decided to shoot another series of images for the panorama because I wanted to try out um, the HDR panorama um, function on or in rather Lightroom. Uh, so what I did was I shot, uh, I think it's around about, oh, it must have been about 24 images. So we're looking at probably eight uh, different segments of the panorama and three exposures for each of that. And we, we'll stitch them together on the computer now and see um, and see what it looks like. It's quite an easy, straightforward uh, thing to do. You just uh, select all the images you shot. And if you um, 
put flag images before the first and last one. It's quite easy to identify them. And then it's just a case of selecting all those images, uh, right clicking, go into photo merge and um, merge as um, uh, HDR panorama. And a couple of days later, depending on how quick your computer is, and I'm really joking, uh, a few minutes later, uh, depending on how quick your computer is, uh, you've got your image. Now, if you were really careful to level your camera um, uh, meticulously when you shot the panorama, you'll note that you don't get a lot of wasted area in your image. Um, but obviously there is going to be some, so you're going to have to crop down to, uh, to get rid of those um, empty or, or white areas. And then it's just a case of um, editing the photo to your taste, really. Um, it's quite, uh, you know, it's quite an easy thing to do. The computer does it all for you. Um, yeah, so there we are. And there is the, the final image. It's not a brilliant, uh, it's not a brilliant uh, landscape by any, um, it, any stretch of the imagination. And I do realise that making a how to shoot panoramas video is a bit like teaching your grandmother how to suck eggs. Uh, it's probably not really needed because everybody's done, uh, everybody's done a panorama video uh, and they're all, they're all. They're all pretty much the same, to be honest. But this one's mine, as I said, up on the mountain. This one's mine. And uh, if you pick up one tiny little thing from it, then so be it. But I thought it would be an interesting exercise to look at the HDR panorama functionality. So I've, I've never used that before. Never, um, I've used the HDR, HDR functionality and I've used the panorama functionality, but, but I never used the two of them uh, merged together like that. And yeah, it does take a little bit of time. And my computer's quite quite a powerful machine it's got uh 20 was it no 32 gigabytes of, of ram in it now uh, i've upgraded that recently uh, and it's not that older computer but it still took a little bit of time to to render that uh render that preview and then the final image uh, but it's worth it in the end um and that really is just about it uh that is how i go about shooting and editing uh, my panorama images all rather simple, all rather old hat. Um, but there we are, I've, I've done another video. Um, uh, as I said to, to Lou in one of my earlier videos and, and to, to Mo who comments quite regularly that uh, at the moment I'm going through a little bit of a creative, um, what's the word, opposite of hiatus, a creative boom if you like um i feel well uh i think this late indian summer that we're having here in south wales is helping um i've been able to get out and about on my bike a little bit and uh, i feel well and i feel strong so while i do feel this way um i'll try pumping out some videos next week's video might be of particular interest to gfx owners because i'm looking at the um it's my review of the GF 23mm f4, uh, the wide angle lens for the GFX system, uh, and that's coming up uh, in a week's time. Uh, in the meantime, uh, as usual, I hope you found this in some way uh, useful or entertaining or whatever. Uh, whether you've taken something from it or not, thank you very much for, uh, for taking the trouble to watch, and Dexter and I will see you again. Where is he? He's a very, very relaxed boy these days. Um, we'll see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye. So we may be gorgeous, so we may be famous Come back when we're getting old Cover us in chocolate, sell us to the next